Hello and welcome to a Star Citizen podcast with me, the lovely, beautiful, and semi famous board gamer, as well as the equally lovely Zinya. Say hello, Zin. Hello, Zin. We are going to be talking about some topics today. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about cheating in Star Citizen. Um, Alpha 3.18 potentially being live later this week. We'll have to ask our Oracle Zinya if that is um, when it's going to release. And uh, the Misc Fury, whatever that is, we'll say we're going to be talking about it. We don't know what it is really. And uh, Alpha 3, no, Alpha 4.0, is it going to have server meshing or not? Well, it might not. We'll come on to that. So, Zin, how are you? You doing all right? Yeah, I'm all right. Thanks for asking. You were you were pretty ill uh, last week with a cold. Yeah. Yeah. Or the week before, or whatever. Week before. Yeah, and I, I also had a cold after going to my stag do reunion. So yeah, we we weren't in the best state to make videos, but we 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 muddled through. It was good. Did you enjoy our playthrough of Sons of the Forest? Yeah, it was all right. I I <laughs> I absolutely loved it until the ending. Obviously, it is in early access. It's uh, got a lot more work that needs to be done to it, but it was a very pretty game, and it was just the general combat and survival was quite fun and it was interesting it was just the story threads of what was going on and sons of the frost was sort of like it, it was a bit erratic they weren't connected together properly y you could tell it was early access yeah i now have a hole in my life which is i want something th that's forest sized to fill it but looking at some other games to play even if it's stardew valley or something i uh, sort of something something to play that's co-op and um progression -y. But that, let's move on to Star Citizen stuff. That's just why most people are probably here. Cheating in Star Citizen. Do you know much about this topic, Sin? I know nothing. I think I did ask you and you said something, but I don't think I was listening, so... Okay, perfect. This sounds like a normal day. Um, okay, so there's been some murmurs more recently about cheating in Star Citizen. So uh, basically, Star Citizen is a computer game that's multiplayer on the internet, and therefore has cheaters in it. People make cheats for games. Star Citizen, probably not too hard to make cheats for because it's not entirely server authoritative, at least not yet. Maybe they'll have some magic tech to make it fully server authoritative. Um, so it's it, there's a lot of client-side processes that go on. And because the game only really has uh, easy anti-cheat as its protection and it's constantly changing its game code, it, it's, it's pretty easy to, to make little hacky boys for. Now, there's been some people that have previously accused people of hacking, which weren't hacking, and um, they sort of proved they weren't hacking, and there's there was some bit of polarization uh, and annoyance there. But really what's happening is there are some hackers in Star Citizen, and some people think if Cloud and PM don't do anything about it now, it's going to be the end of the game. It's going to, oh god, if Cloud and PM don't fix the hackers, GG, it's over. So w w what do you think? What do you think about hacking in general in, in Star Citizen now, and... Is it a major problem? Have you ever seen a hacker that you're aware of? I don't think I've ever seen a hacker that I'm aware of. I mean, I, I mm -hmm. very rarely see people in game anyway. I suppose that space is big. Yeah. Is it a problem? Like, so the game's early access, so it's not going to really benefit them in any way, is it? No. I mean, it damages, you could, you could say it damages testing because there being hackers makes testing data a bit weirder. Yes. Um, but you could also say that it's good that people are cheating so Clown and Pyram can get a, a bit of a, a thumb on it now. Gonna put their finger in that cheat pie and go, we know what's going on with this. Um, obviously, yeah. easy anti-cheat is... I'm not a fan of easy anti-cheat. I think it's quite an invasive uh, and not great anti-cheat method. I, I, th I think as well, cheating is much more... You're going to see cheating much more if you are a high-level PvPer. Because you're more likely to engage people at high level PvP. Yeah. And at, at the top, I would expect there are more cheaters than you would just encounter normally. That That is that is anecdotal, but that is a, an educated guess of um, where, where I would see the problems going. I don't see much problem with cheating in Star Citizen at the moment. I haven't seen it very much at all. I, I could not call out um, a cheater. Um, I, I, and I, as Zin will probably be able to um, uh, agree with me, uh, I'm the first person to assume everyone in the world is cheating when I when I lose at something. Play Overwatch, everyone's cheating. If their aim's better than me, they're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think it's much of a problem. I mean, I haven't experienced it, which is why. Um, it, and even if it 
is something that Clan Imperium don't fix at the moment. As long as it doesn't get egregious and rampant, then I think we're fine. W what we need is in the future, Clan Imperium to um, have great logging so they can see if someone's cheating, um, a, a solid anti-cheat method. Um, and if they move to more sort of, sort of authoritative stuff, well, great, because that means that it's much less likely to be able to cheat. I don't think it's a problem. Zin obviously hasn't even seen it in game. That's our thoughts on it. Probably not a huge, not a huge deal. I saw some very dramatic videos on it and people were talking about it a bit. And I mean, I can totally understand people getting annoyed if they experience it. Like, it's a very frustrating thing. It's not fair. Cheating is, cheating is scum. Cheat, cheaters are scum. Like, genuinely. I, I absolutely hate if people are cheating at stuff. It makes my blood, oof, makes it boil. <laughs> Genuinely, I absolutely hate it. So I can imagine if someone has experienced that, that they're, they're going to be like, no, it's, it is a genuine problem. Um, but uh, as we have not, um, and as it doesn't appear to be egregious, um, there's always going to be cheaters in any online game because there, it, there's money to be made basically um, by selling those cheats and by getting gold and stuff like that. So you, you could use cheats to more efficiently farm gold and stuff like that and then sell it on eBay. Um, so anytime there's an economy, there's going to be cheating. We'll keep an eye on it and I'll, I'll talk about it if it, if it does become more of a problem. But I think people cheating in Star Citizen at the moment kind of helps CIG out because they can go, well, how are people cheating? What are they doing? What can we expect in the future? Oracle Xenia. Yes. Will 3.18 go live this week like Cloud Imperium wants? I don't know. Why don't you uh, ask your bones? Oh. Do you even know where they are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you even know how to read them? No, they just look like some plastic cheap bones that I threw on my, my table. They're, they're lovely, though, Sin. I've got, a, I've got a crystal ball. I've got a red telephone. I've got my, I've got my bones. Uh, and you still involved. have no idea. I don't know what my didgeridoo. Um, that, that would tell me. Um, so, yeah, Clan Imperium want to get 3.18 live this week. That's what they've said. That's the plan. Uh, it is a possibility. Uh, so they had a stress test over the weekend, which had mixed success. Basically, there's a load of blockers for 3.18 at the moment. If Clan Imperium can get um, the b the big blockers solved, it will go live. And if they cannot, then it will go live next week, almost certainly, um, sort of the, the week after. But yeah, as Clan Imperium are just focused on bug fixing for 3.18 now, um, it is something that they might be able to do pretty well as it's focused that they might be able to get it out. Do you think it's a genuine possibility for this week's in? Or do you think, ugh, it, it's, pff, who knows? Um, I mean, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? So it'll always be nice. <laughs> I mean, how's the uh, list of known issues looking at the moment? It's big. Um, and I think the stress test over the weekend exposed some more bugs. There's an erratic stability on some servers. So there's, there's 30Ks. There is a few accessibility and elevator tram ship spawn problems stuff like that so and um, that there are, there are some big problems of actually playing some of the gameplay um be actually being able to access your ship getting to your ship falling through elevators janky jittery trains so things like that if they are not fixed it can't go live yeah it's really hard to tell if it's something that cloud imperium will be able to get fixed this week or not they don't tell us exactly what's going on with those bugs. Although in the PT patches we've seen after, over the last couple of weeks, they keep on going. And we fixed um, some of the issues related to the, the tram and, serv uh, and, and server and elevator problems. Or this uh, patch contains um, potential fixes for um, people falling through elevators or the trams not um, turning up. Um, so they, they are getting through that. Um, some of these bug fixes are working. Some of them are not. And they break in regression testing. Um, well, they're still broken in regression testing. So at the moment, it's a bit of a toss-up if 3.18 is going to be this week. It is Clive Imperium's plan, um, but if not, almost certainly the week after. Lots of cool content in 3.18. Salvage, persistent entity streaming, soft destruction. I think that's that's probably my, my, my favourite thing is when you blow up in your ship now, you're almost certainly um, going to still be alive in the flaming hulk of your ship, and then you can call for uh, rescue, or you can go and board someone else's ship um, that you've blown up. Oh, it's cool. Um, always bring a gravity tool with you. I think that's the, the main thing of 3.18. Bring uh, a gravity tool with your multi-tool. Zin. Yeah. What are you most looking forward to 3.18? Let's ask that quick before we move on to the next topic. Uh, one sec. Oh, she's prepared something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've not prepared anything. Perfect. What is 3.18 going to bring us? I think salvage is more my sort of thing. I think I'm definitely looking yep. forward to that most. I've done a bit of salvage. It's it's very relaxing. I'll uh, take you and Sen out in a reclaimer. Yeah, that'll be good. 
and we'll get some footage of that. That'll be a good laugh. And I think if I die a criminal, the, the sandbox prison activities. Yeah, so that prisons are a lot more interesting now. So there, there's more to do. There's more missions associated with them. There's better ways of escaping the planet, also the moon, afterwards. Is it Aberdeen? It's pleasure on Aberdeen, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's on Aberdeen. And there's NPCs running around in the mines as well, so you can uh, mug them. Yes, I have seen the NPCs. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm looking forward to 3.18. I think it's going to be a laugh. Something I think that we will be able to do a lot better in 3.18 is medical rescue gameplay. Because of that soft destruction system, there's going to be people boarding ships. There's going to be people in sort of hulks of ships. They're going to want rescuing. Um, I think that um, medical gameplay is at a state where it works. It's just, are people going to want to wait around or are they just going to respawn? Um so hopefully people will be more encouraged to resport uh, to um to wait around for, for us to come rescue them, especially with like the Siege of Orison um, platform missions. And it's not Siege of Orison, but it's, it's on the same platforms. Yeah. Things like that. We have to easily get to them. Zin. Yes. What's the Misk Fury, Zin? What is the Misk Fury? Well, we don't know. It was mentioned on a Star Citizen Live where one of the VFX team went, oh yeah, and this guy's working on the Misk Fury. And, <laughs> and I don't think he was supposed to say that. So, Misk Fury being worked on by the uh, VFX team, assuming it's not a mistake or a troll by them, what could it be? Like, Fury sounds like a combat um, ship. Yeah. Is it Babylon 5 that have Furies in it? Uh, I wouldn't know. Babylon. You're, you're a nerd, though, in Five Furies. Are they the little human fight? Yeah, so they're the X-Wing styled human fighters in Babylon 5. Obviously, we have already have a, a Star Wars X-Wing. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that we might be getting a medium or heavy combat fighter for sort of Fleet Week. That's my expectation of the Fury. Do you think we could be having something like that? Do you think it could be in our hands soon because it's being worked on the VFX team and typically they're downstream, which means that the, if the VFX are working on it, then it's probably almost finished, right? Possibly, yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many ships have we got that are unannounced that are nearing completion? Um, a, a load. So, quite possibly. Yeah, it, it, it is It is like four or five, I think. Uh, progress tracker. Uh, deliverables unannounced. So it's hard to tell. There could be quite a lot. It's between like four and twelve. <laughs> um, because it just says unannounced, right? Yeah. Looks like seven unannounced vehicles and ships eight it's like eight but the progress tracker doesn't have anything more than unannounced um vehicle and then um some teams working on it yeah um some either concept teams or uh, content teams but uh i think we can expect fleet week which is typically at the end of may have some new ships and vehicles when's alien week it's a little bit after fleet week uh alien week because they don't have alien ships typically because isn't it mid June? Isn't it Misk who have the, uh, the thingy with the one of the alien races? <laughs> the th they they have a contract yeah. with the Xi'an, and I can't remember the name of the ship that is half Xi'an, half human. Well, there's the Sen Tana. The Reliance. That's the Reliance series. The Reliance. Sorry. Is it the Reliance? That yeah, it might be the Reliance. That are... yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So there's a possibility that it's part alien based. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get quite excited when there's just a li little tiny leaks like that. Like it's like, oh, whoops, we've <laughs> said the name of a ship. Now everyone goes mad for it. Um, yeah, Fu Fury does sound like the name of a combat ship. Yeah. And you're right. It could be. It could be half alien. Um, for, for sure. But whatever it is, uh, I'm expecting it for Fleet Week. I think that's sort of fair. Now, Zin, mm. let's move on to 4.0. Clan Imperium want to get Pyro in our hands as soon as possible. That's what they've said. And um, that might mean that they're decoupling the replication layer and sort of adding that stuff and server meshing later. So 4.0 might have no server meshing or server meshing light. I thought, wait, so 4.0 was going to be mostly the introduction of Pyro, wasn't it? So 4.0... It was supposed to be jump points or jump point, pyro and server meshing. That was the core features of of four mm. And now they've gone. We want to get we want to get 
4.0 and, and Pyro into your hands ASAP. So we might be scaling back the first iteration of, of server meshing. Well, they, they said decoupling the replication layer, which basically would mean that you would effectively be moving between servers to go to Pyro, not in the way that they had intended with server meshing. But it, functionally, it sounds like it would work pretty similarly, though. I'm moving into a new star system. I don't care if there's a, a fake loading screen or yeah. a loading screen. It, just give me Pyro. Now, some people might be like, oh, they, they should have known that they wouldn't have been able to get server meshing done this quickly. Or um, no, they shouldn't put something like this in as a, as a placeholder for some of the contacts and they have to keep on redoing it. And I agree with, I don't want Cloud MPM to keep on redoing and reworking the same systems with if they're putting placeholder systems in um, in the short term and then they, it causes them what will work in the long term. But I don't mind if it's steps towards server meshing because that's what it's likely to be. They're going, yeah, we're going to get Pyro in, which is important. We're going to get some of the server meshing stuff sort of ready and we're going to put in a temporary version, which we'll then build on. I think if they do that, that's fine. What's your sort of thoughts on Cloud MPM? constantly reworking systems and putting placeholder systems in and what should they do with server meshing for 4.0 do you think they no, they should wait and wait for it to be ready and then put it in or get it into our hands as quickly as possible i think they can't keep pushing 4.0 back mm -hmm. and i think having to make i apologize for the noise in the background if you can hear that mm -hmm. it's a pair of kittens running around mad anyway I thought it was dc just foraging <laughs> i think if they need to make sacrifices in order to get 4.0 in our hands, I think that's a, a necessity, really. Yeah, okay. It, it, it sucks, it's... but, you know, I, I'd like to see Pyro in, in my lifetime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to get in our hands as soon as possible. It makes sense because people want it so much and um, they need to... They're, they're running a development as a service as part of their early access. So they need to develop and they need to get stuff into our hands. And they can't keep on holding stuff back and keep on promising Pyro and never even delivering it. So, yeah, push Pyro out as soon as possible. And um, as long as it's not going to cause you a load of extra work in the future, great. Go server meshing as soon as they can after that for static server meshing. I think that's sort of sort of fair. Yeah, so I think we think that it's likely that 4.0 will have either steps towards server meshing, server meshing light, or, or no server meshing. Um, so sort of bear that in mind. We will talk about that a bit more once we know a bit more clan and pyram are doing a series on server meshing and the sort of road to pyro at the moment so clan and pyram have sort of changed their language to be the road to 4.0 and the road to pyro and so it's more it is pyro focused it is not server meshing focused anymore yeah obviously clan and pyram need server meshing or something similar to that to make the game an mmo in the seamless nature that they want so for people that don't know, server meshing basically divides uh, the shard that you're on into multiple servers, which you then move between seamlessly. And because of that, they can have eventually when they have dynamic server meshing, which is the next stage of server meshing after after static, they can have an individual ship uh, or a room or a planet or an area of space all as their own server based on the needs of the population. It's, it's, it's cool and it's needed to have these giant space battles, but um, we'll get it when we get it. Star Citizen is a long burn. And it's going to be like, I think, four or five years before we're in the sort of like area that we might have a beta for the game. Does it, out of curiosity, when do you think Star Citizen will be released? If you literally, if you had a guess now. Well, I don't know, because they keep moving the goalposts, don't they? Like what, what classifies as released? What, what do they want to be able to say, yep, this game has been released? That's fair. Do they keep moving the goalposts? Well, I, so more so my question is, do they even know what the release will look like? Yeah. Have we ever seen a goal? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you say they moved the goalposts. I say they haven't defined where the, the what game we're playing, um, <laughs> where the goal is. Um, is it a ball game? I don't know. Um, yeah, fair. Star Citizen scopes are massive. Um, people would basically, back in the day, would definitely have seen it, and, and still say it now, that it's just hugely um, feature creeped and bloated. But because they've been given as much time and money and a community support, as they have been, that sort of feature creep just becomes a genuine reality for, for the game. They go, well, actually, all these features are going to be in the game eventually because, you know, we've got the time, we've got the skill, and they're expanding their studios. But yes, you can criticise Star Citizen for not knowing where the goal is, not defining what their minimum viable product is for a version one release, uh, and just being incredibly long development time. But um, that's why it's development as a service. That's why it's 
playable now. And they do release a few patches each year. Um, and at the moment, because they're finishing off the, those core features with persistent entry streaming for 3.18 and the next major, 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 major milestone, I suppose it's Pyro and then, and then it's server meshing. And then, then we're, you know, we got the core of the game, mostly. I mean, we need physical components. Oh, there's so much more, Sin. There's so much more. <laughs> <laughs> I think five years for a beta, four, four, five years for a beta. And then I think Clan and PM will then need to define fully what a version one release is because they're going to be developing the game 10 plus years after its release. Like they're, they're going to be adding more and more and more and more as you should with a live product. I'm looking forward to it. Hope Sin is because she's going to be playing a load of it whether she wants to or not. Mm-hmm. Literally paid to play it. Literally paid, <laughs> but not by Cloud Imperium. No. We don't get any money from Cloud Imperium. If other creators do, where's my money? Where's I want some money? I saw a comment on one of my videos uh, yesterday, which is, how much do you get paid by Cloud Imperium to make these videos? <laughs> uh, I don't. I wish I did. Um, that'd be great. Happily shill for something I like. Right. I'll, I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hopefully we'll have 3.18 by the end of the week. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, Zin. Say goodbye, Zin. Goodbye, Zin. You guys take care, and I'll see you in the verse. It's 2023. There's no need for a VPN like NordVPN, right? In the modern era. Wrong. What's this? A Silent Hill styled ad? No, due to copyright, it's actually a quiet mound ad. But that siren means that someone's got my browsing data and hacked all my sanity away at Starbucks. Oh no, that guy's got a triangle on his head. Ah! I've never had a Silent Hill instant while using NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. By God, can you risk not having it? Well, probably, but why take the chance? NordVPN can help you access more content on the internet from more countries in a safer and more private way. It's an essential tool in your arsenal in 2023 against the legally distinct Triangle Head. Check out the links below for one hell of a deal. Every month we have a ship giveaway. For March, we are giving away an Argo Raft, the mighty little hauler that could. Soon, it should be able to make use of its 32 SCU cargo boxes. But in Alpha 3.18, it's going to have to make you some serious Alpha UEC from cargo hauling. It also comes with a game package and lifetime insurance, all you need to get started in your Star Citizen career. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. Please consider becoming a YouTube member with the join button under our videos or using the links below Patreon. It really goes the extra mile to support us making daily content for Star Citizen. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe and share it with your space friends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the verse.